and yet we have the same solid. But uh, let's take a look at this one in here. And uh, I have a setup here on my sales order. So if I go in and look at it right now, everything in here is actually uh, looking normal. I have all my actions up here. I have uh, my page looking normal. I can edit every field in here. If I go into my uh, user security in here, I'll put in one record in here. And I'll basically put in one that is for the blank user. It defaults for everybody in the system. And it defaults to a card out here called uh, read only now. So if I actually now go back to look at my sales orders, Suddenly, my list up here has no actions any longer. They're all grayed out. If I look at a single sales order, every field is grayed out. I can't change anything. I can't click on anything. So they basically made the whole system here read only for the user. I'm still a super user, roles wise, but I'm completely locked down from using this one anywhere in here. If I go back and say that was a little more than I wanted, I'm locked in as a user. Um, Currently in here, that's actually called Uber down here. So let me go in and try to say, and say I don't want to have the read only, but I want to use the basic access in here. So if I now go back, look at my sales orders, my list wouldn't change anything in here actually. So I don't. But if I come back, I can now click on my statistics button up here, and um, I will show those entries. Uh, the other thing is I can type in my customer number. I can type in my address down here. I can still create a record, but I can't change the salesperson. I can't do anything except the few things I'm allowed to do in here, actually, inside those orders. If we take a look at the setup, how that actually is done in here, we can take a look at this basic code and uh, see how that is. We have each individual object in here. So I have page zero, same as a blank user. It's basically as a default. Out here I have set it to view, so I can only see that page. I can't edit anything on that one. If I go down and say that I want to go in here and add my sales order statistic, I actually don't want people to see that one, so I'm going to hide that uh, page in here. I'm still a super user, but I will get an error when I actually try and run this in here. If I look at my sales order, I have now specified fields in here because the sales order is editable to uh, begin with. But down here, I have fields are specifying. Again, zero is my default. So I go in and say, I'm going to hide every field by default now. And then I go in and say, okay, this one are the one you can edit in here. When I get down to the controls, that's are the buttons in here. Again, I will go hide everything. And I can then uh, put the one in that the user actually can see in here. So let me go in and just add the post and print, for example. But I just want to tell people there is a button like that one, so I go and make it view in here. If I go back to my uh, list of sales orders, I'm in a drill down here, so I have to close that. Now almost every field disappeared in here. I only have the few fields that are editable. My post and print is grayed out. My statistics are still here. But if I click on it, I just get an error in here. So you have complete control of the client entry in here. So, one thing I will warn you about with this one, we're currently working with some issues with Microsoft about customizations. Because it used to be that Microsoft say, hey, if you write code that control this, you will take over the uh, customizations. They finally agreed that that's not the right approach and they actually fixed a few things. In there. We have three known issues that we have worked on for like eight, 10 months with them. They fixed the first one and then promise us to fix other ones too. But again, it's like, the concept is not totally wrong, but the thing is, like for all super users, you don't do this one. You do it for the thirty percent of the users you really tie down, and that's why it is so. But we we will have a build soon that will work with those ones. So. The other side of this application is uh, the ability to actually control security uh, on the data level. Also, if I look at it before I go anywhere, I'll look at my customers up here. And I have a pretty long list of customers uh, for different locations and uh, with different posting groups in here. So uh, I can see, oh, it ended up in the back, of course, in here. So, yeah, 
and I can't do that one. That's in classic. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is natural to pull them. Yeah. yeah. But you have to tell the system you want to customize before you do it. Yeah. But you see out here, there is different hosting groups also in here. So if I want to go in and say, I want this user to only work with the customer that uh, domestic for me in here. That's what we have done with our setup in here that, uh, again, we control each individual object. So in the list of objects, we have added a hidden filter. The user can't see it, they can't remove it, they don't even know there is a filter on that data in here. Basically for the blank or domestic in the posting group. If I go look at zero, the general page or default page, we have the same for posting group, but we also have for location code down here. We can actually also go in and add filters. We call them dynamic filters. It basically means that it's based on a calculation. It's a code unit returning a value. So you can write code that will do anything in here, uh, like an organization where you have a manager for three salespeople and his manager has maybe three other managers. You can write a function that return all the salespeople's names and just use that as one single filter in here. And you could do that instead of writing hard code in here. So uh, let's go ahead and apply this domestic uh, data filter in here, and then go back and look at my list of customers in here. Now suddenly the list got really, really short in here because uh, I only have a few customers with domestic in here. If I look at it, I also filtered on the location. So if I actually try to open up this uh, customer, it will tell me that that record cannot be located, and it will show me the first record the user is allowed to see. So where this one could be used, you have a, you're creating a new sales order, and you're using the list of customers. It shows you all the customers in the system. When you try to open the customer card to edit the address, you're only allowed to see the one where you're the salesperson on it. So you actually have an ability to control this one also to a very high degree. All this security setup in here, it don't rely to anything related to roles and logins. It's two totally different setups, and we can tie down this one. So even super users can actually uh, limit their access to the system with this one. Here. I won't recommend you only use this one, because you can still run the table from the designer, and then you can get to every field and things like that one. But you can, uh, to a very high degree, control even very high commission users uh, this one. Um, we have an FAQ that one line of code requires for it. Uh, it's two uh, reports, it's three ways of filtering on them. So if we just add the filter automatically, we will potentially break the report. Plus a lot of times you have a variable and you're loading records into a temporary table and the temporary table is what you're actually displaying. So you need to know what it is. In general, we normally recommend that you don't allow people to run any reports in the system. Only the one you have corrected is one actual one. And again, the customer can attribute themselves now in reports. So they can go in and write the code if they need. So, but the answer is right out of the box, no, but it's very easy to modify. 